Developing story we're working on here at home. A convicted child molester under arrest again tonight after newly tested DNA allegedly linked him to the 1988 murder of an eight year old boy. Police telling us the suspect lived in the same complex as the victim when he disappeared. Latasha Givens joining us live now from the Roswell Police Department and Latasha this arrest. This must be such a huge relief to the boy's family. It has been a long time. That's right, Sheba. His family still remembers him as the little boy who loved nature, ice cream, and playing outside. And for three decades, they held out hope for answers to find out what happened to him. And just recently, when his body was exhumed, advanced DNA testing finally led police to a suspect. After 33 years, two months, and six days, we have made an arrest in the murder of Joshua Harmon. Roswell Police Chief James Conroy was visibly emotional as he announced an arrest in a code case that has haunted the department for decades. Josh was an amazing young boy um, who had an uncanny relationship with nature and with God. This complex has changed over the years, but it was the last place Joshua Harmon was seen alive as he played outside on May 15, 1988. He never returned home. Over the following 48 hours, Joshua's body was discovered in a wooded area. Police say this was the last picture taken of the eight year old at a petting zoo before he was murdered. This investigation is one that haunts an investigator and the kind of case that keeps detectives and agents up at night. As time went on, Joshua's mother, Sherry, passed away. And while detectives and special agents never stopped working the case, their efforts didn't yield an arrest until recently, when Roswell police worked with the law enforcement partners to get funding for enhanced DNA testing, and Joshua's body was exhumed. New technology matching DNA to a man who had already served time in Georgia for child molestation. James Michael Coates, age 56, of the city of Woodstock, was taken into custody July 21st, and booked into the Fulton County Jail on multiple charges, including murder. Police say Coates lived at the same apartment complex as Joshua, although the boy's family didn't know him well. To the Harmon family, this is a tragedy that no family should endure. The death of Joshua and the fact that his killer remained free for such a long time is unimaginable. I want to speak on behalf of our family um, and thank these amazing people who have worked diligently and very hard and always took anything and everything we had to say to heart and ran with it. Coates is facing a very long list of charges in this case, including felony murder. We'll have much more on his previous conviction coming up in just a moment. Astounding Latasha, more than 33 years and they never gave up hope. Here's a closer look at the timeline here. Joshua Harmon disappears on May 15th, 1988. Two days later, his body is found, but no one is arrested. Fast forward to 1993 when James Coates is convicted of child molestation in an unrelated case. He spends 20 years behind bars and in 2013 is released. But it wasn't until Joshua's body was exhumed for DNA testing in February of this year that police connected the the dots and arrested Coates this week. Roswell police largely crediting the advancements in DNA evidence for breaking the cold case and linking Coates to the boy's murder. Brittany Kleinpeter just spoke with a detective in the Roswell Police Department's crime scene unit. And Brittany, the technology they have now is very different from what they were dealing with back in the 80s, right? That's right. The detective told me 30 years ago, their department and all other criminal investigation units really only could rely on basic forensics like weapons. Now, continuous advancements in technology are giving them tools in these cold cases. Incredibly fortunate to work with some amazing detectives and investigators and command staff. And we, we have a pretty phenomenal agency. I would rival that we, um, you know, are. Um, agency in terms of training, in terms of uh, the equipment that we use. We are cutting edge, we're 21st century. That, that's the push. The push is to constantly become better and better and do right by your community. Detective Kowalski told me another crucial aspect in these cold cases is the commitment to going back over everything, slowing down and examining each detail. Coming up at six, I'll dive more into the case from a legal perspective and what happens next. Just fascinating. Brittany, thank you.